I just finished homeschooling a sixth grader for the first time. I'm gonna do it again. I have more kids, but this is my oldest child. And so this is our kind of in-between. Technically, he's considered middle school where we are, but I know that sometimes that's end of elementary school, sometimes that's middle school. It's kind of an in-between stage and I'm here to tell about it. If you don't know me, my name is Aileen. This is Homeschool with the Clarks. I love sharing about homeschool and motherhood and some home cooking type stuff. And my kiddos at the time of recording this are in si finishing sixth, fourth, and first grade. And I also have a three-year-old. So sixth grade, lots of things, all the math, all the reading, composition, all the things. We did a lot of the same of what we did in fifth grade for sixth grade. We used Zern, which is an online math program for fifth grade. We continued that for sixth grade and it was okay. <laughs> if you've watched my other videos, I did, my fourth grader stopped using it mid-year because it wasn't working for her anymore. And I did end up having to supplement Zern for him because it wasn't covering all of the things he needed to be covering for sixth grade. So we ended up supplementing with IXL online and using their workbook a little bit. He ended up doing some tutoring, utilizing the workbook. So he did that and overall with those all of those pieces, I feel like he had a successful sixth grade year. He actually <laughs> raced and finished his last five lessons in Zern like two or three weeks before school was supposed to end so he could be done with math for the year. <laughs> So he did it. He finished it. We finished a math program, which is not always happens. Sometimes you don't finish the math. We finished the math this year. So that was, that was good. Um, my complaint with Zern is that he's not writing out the problems and it does have student notes, but the stu I thought the student notes would have like some problems for him to do. But a lot of times it was like asking a question then he wouldn't have to answer in like sentence form which didn't really, it just didn't really fulfill what I needed him to fulfill. Hence the IXL and digging into those pieces as well. So we did that. Um, we will not be continuing Zern for seventh grade. So stay tuned for that for me to share what we're going to do for seventh grade math. I will share that in a different video. Um, but he finished it. He finished sixth grade. We did it. And then for English, we had a few different moving pieces that we did this year. We did, instead of having individualized novels for him, like I've done in past years, I actually, I mean, we always do read alouds, but I picked the read alouds more on the higher elementary age level specifically for him. And we talked about some literary pieces while we were reading them. We used a Blossom and Roots level four language arts for that because I liked the books and how they, some of them aligned with our history that we did. So we did those, those were a really big success. He <laughs> did some reading of his own. He read a lot of Calvin and Hobbes. My husband had Calvin and Hobbes from his childhood that he gave to him, which I remember reading those as well. And then we ended up buying him like all the Calvin and Hobbes because he was really into those. He read some Last Kids on Earth and just some other books here and there, but those were the big ones, Last Kids on Earth and Calvin and Hobbes. And again, I didn't assign any readers to him. We participated in a book club. We did all of those books. And then we did most of the books from Blossom and Roots. So we did a ton of read alouds. Plus we read Harry Potter or listened to Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix this year on audiobook in the car. So lots of books, lots of stories. We did all of that. Um, and he, I think was happy with that because he didn't have assigned novels. I don't know that we're going to stick with that plan for next year for seventh grade, but for sixth grade, that was a good fit for us. I read to him and then he got to pick what he read and he was happy with that. And he was reading, which is what I want. The other pieces that we used for language arts was IEW. We used their theme-based writing program and Fix-It Grammar. He absolutely loves Fix-It Grammar. He's on Town Mouse country mouse, I think it's called. It basically goes through a story over the course of a school year, but it's like every day you're editing a different sentence and they slowly start to add in different um, grammar concepts. They have a vocabulary word in there. And so he has to edit it and, and mark the grammar concepts and then rewrite it. It's quick and easy. I do, I have heard that the further levels on get progressively like harder 
like really hard. So I don't know how that's going to work out, but right now he's really happy with that. So that was a success. I feel like his grammar, his understanding of grammar really improved this year. So that was good. The other piece was the theme-based writing. And that one was good. We worked through the rest of his book. And I like it because you're pulling from writing for most of the units and it alternates between creative writing and more like structured writing. And you're pulling from something and then you you make like a keyword outline and then you read and write it in your own words. And so it takes away the need to come up with your own ideas, which I think can be helpful of a hesitant writer or someone who's not really, really strong in that area. I think that that takes away that piece. So that was good. However, and I, so we are a part of a homeschool charter. We live in California. So technically, even though we homeschool, my kids are enrolled in a public school. And because of that, they have to participate in state testing. And some people have opinions on that, but that's what we do. Okay. We get funding. They help pay for the extracurriculars. They pay for our curriculum. We participate in the testing because they need us to do that. And so he went to do testing this spring and there was an essay portion and he was like, essay, I've written an essay. I've never written an essay before. And I realized that although IEW does get to essays, it's like the level we are using, it's only at the end. It's very, very quickly touched upon. And even though he was writing multiple paragraphs, they weren't using the term essay in it. And I just feel like it just wasn't strong enough in that area. And I know that as you progress in the levels, it does get stronger, but I wish that I wish there was more in the lower levels because the reality is, is the expectation for us in our personal situation is my kids have to participate in state testing starting in third grade and they have to write an essay. And for some reason, and he's done it before, but for some reason this year, it made him very, very anxious and felt very ill-equipped. And then it was on me, like I didn't equip him. He's in sixth grade, he should be able to write an essay. And he couldn't. Coincidentally, he like had some time in between starting his testing and finishing his testing. And so I ended up signing him up for this essay writing class on OutSchool. And every week was like a different theme. So he only did two of them before the end of the school year. One was a movie review and she like talks through it. It's like an hour long class. She talks through it with them and helps them make the outline. And then they write the essay and they submit it to her and she gives them feedback. So we were really happy with that. We may continue that next year. I think she technically says it's for upper elementary, but I may have him do it for seventh grade because it gave him that confidence that I was not instilling in him with the IEW. So that was kind of a bummer <laughs> to realize that I had was giving him a gap. You know, they all have educational gaps where public school, you're going to have them, private school, you're going to have them, homeschooling, you're going to have them. But to realize there's this huge gaping hole. So I guess my complaint or my disappointment with the IEW theme based writing was that it did not cover that enough for him, for his needs, for our needs. So we ended up having to supplement. The next thing that we did this year that was new was we did a workbook from Evan Moore called Reading Comprehension Fundamentals. And I did this because he struggles with reading something and then like actually like committing it to memory, he just like skims through it. And so this one was like had different genres of writing and it gave you different like buzzwords to look for and different ways that an author may include information. And it would tell you, it would have you read the piece and it would give you clues and have you answer those questions. And that I saw a lot of growth in his ability to pay attention and be able to gather facts from a reading from doing that workbook. We did not do it from cover to cover. We, I picked and choose, picked and chose what I wanted him to do. And I did end up having to sit with him and do it uh, for most of the year because, and I thought I went into it thinking he was going to be able to do it by himself, but he really needed help with it. And I don't know, it depends on the kid. So some kids may be able to do it, but he really thrives when I like body double where I'm like just sitting with him when he does his work. So he doesn't get distracted, but this one, we really 
I really talked through it with him and was like, wait, look, it, let's go back and look at this. Let's look at this little blurb right here. Okay, it says to look for these buzzwords and that's where you're gonna find the information. And then it just asks questions. And so sometimes like he would write out the answers. Sometimes we would take turns and I would write an answer and then he would write an answer. And sometimes we would do it verbally. But that was successful. I felt really good about that workbook. I'm really happy that we used it. I've had a couple people in random Facebook groups ask about reading comprehension workbooks since then. And I'm like, yes, use this one because it's it really worked for us. It was really successful. The other thing he did this year, which wasn't 100% needed, he asked to do it because his fourth grade sister was doing it, was the he did cursive again. So he did Logic of English's cursive workbook. And he only did about half of it. And then he ended up asking if he could participate in our spelling lessons on whiteboards because we used sequential spelling for my younger girls. And he would just write the words in cursive and practice his cursive. And then it was like, he'd forget how to do a letter and I would show it to him on the whiteboard and then he would write it. And I feel like he has really grown in his cursive this year. I always say my goal with cursive is I want them to be able to sign their name first and last and read cursive, okay? Because if you think about it, all of like the older documents in the world, they're like written in cursive. So I want him to be able to read that. I think every person should be able to read something in cursive. And also if your Aunt Aileen sends you a card, I'm talking to you nieces and nephews, if I send you a birthday card, I'm gonna write you a note in cursive. I want him to be able to just read it. I don't care if, I'm not gonna make him write papers in cursive, but I want him to be able to sign his name when he gets his, license, gets his driver's license, he needs to be able to sign his name in cursive and read it. And we accomplished that. He can do both of these things this year. So I'm like, yes, we did it. Before I move on to the enrichment that he did this year, could you do me a favor and like my video? Thank you. Enrichment, that's a piece of it, right? So, and it's different for every family, but for us, we do do a lot of activities outside of the home. He, so this year, my son participated in Boy Scouts. He was in Cub Scouts since first grade. He bridged Boy Scouts in fifth grade. So now he's a Boy Scout. He went on his first ever camp out without us this year, which was a huge deal. He was so nervous, but he did it. They went camping. They did some like rock climbing and he had a good time. He had to prepare food for himself. That was really cool. It does depend on the troop because we joined another troop and it wasn't a good fit. So if that's something you're looking at, try out different troops because it can make a difference. But I love that they they teach leadership. As they move up levels, they actually have to like interview on this panel. So it gives them interview skills. It gives them the life skills. They do really cool adventures. So that's been really great for him. And I'm so proud of him for going on that camp out because he was nervous. The other things he's done this year, he did do gymnastics in the fall with his sisters for a little while, and then he did indoor soccer, and then he ended the year with Little League, and it was his last year officially as a Little Leaguer, and then he ages out, and he's like intermediate baseball. I don't know. So that was good. Lots of sports. He does well when he's active, so I try and keep him active year-round. He also did play an instrument this year and took private lessons. He did trumpet. This is his second year playing trumpet and he participated in two recitals. So that was really great. He's going to, I think, continue with trumpet next year. He's kind of deciding between trumpet and theater. I told him he had to pick one or the other um, just cost wise. We can only pay for so much and time wise. So he's kind of deciding what he's going to do for next year, but he did really great with trumpet and we're really proud of him. And overall, it was a really good, well-rounded sixth grade year and he's excited for seventh grade.